Okay, so this is EE658 lecture 3. Yesterday we looked at the spectral properties of a sample signal, right? And towards the end of last class, we saw that finally sampling has to be done by real transistors, okay? And real transistors have finite speed. So, if you want to sample a signal really, really quickly, it may not be possible for, for the transistors to be able to work at those speeds. So, one way out is to use two such circuits operating in a so called ping pong fashion, where each one is actually working at half the rate, but two of them put together when both of them are working properly, okay, will give you an equivalent sampling rate of, of 2x, okay. And this is a very commonly used trick in, uh, in a lot of high speed equipment, especially uh, scopes and so on, where it is often not possible to build uh, sample, I mean the digital scopes that you see in the lab, right. Uh, there are really, really high end scopes which uh, who, uh, who have bandwidths of the order of several tens of gigahertz and it is often not possible to build sample and hold circuits which are able to sample at those speeds. However, you might be able to build a sample and hold which samples at say one tenth the speed, in which case you put 10 of these guys together, each one of these works at one tenth the speed and then you look at the sample output sequences of each of these slow sample and holds and presumably you can put them together in a fashion so as to get an equivalent uh, sampling rate of you know 10 gigahertz or 20 gigahertz or whatever it is, okay. So, we, uh, uh, you know as illustration I will today consider what happens when you uh, have two sample and holds operating at half the rate and we will see what happens, uh, I mean we would expect of course that if both the sample and holds are within quotes ideal, okay, to within the, uh, to with, uh, with the, uh, when you sample at one half the um, the rate that you want, then you would expect that it would be equivalent to a full rate sample and hold. On the other hand, if the two uh, sample and holds are not as ideal as you would, you might think, then we would expect to see some artifacts coming out. So, we will uh, take a look at it uh, as we go along. So, this is often called time interleaved sampling. And the basic idea is the following. So, let us say you have an analog signal like that. You are not able to build a sample and hold with samples at full rate. So, what you do is have uh, one sample and hold processing every other sample. and you have another sample and hold processing the <coughs> the odd samples. So, the circles stand for the even samples. and the crosses stand for the odd samples. So, if you assume that the sampling operation is represented by a box, okay, where the input is the continuous time signal, you have an output which is a discrete time signal, correct? And you have a control which tells the sampler when to sample, okay. So, if for example, you want, you have two sample and holds, one sampling at, so let me call the, the Nyquist rate as T, okay. You have one sampler sampling at all even instances of time. So, it is k times 2t. So, let me call this sequence x even of n and you 
you have another sampler sampling at it's two k plus one times t and these are the odd samples x o of n all right how will i get the uh, the equivalent sequence which is sampled at twice the rate okay let's see x e of n is some sequence like this uh, okay this is x e of n because this chap corresponds to this guy this chap is this one this chap is this one and so on okay similarly x o of n is Okay, because this corresponds to this chap corresponds to this chap this chap corresponds to this chap and so on does it make sense okay i mean once you have a sequence it's a sequence there is no i mean time doesn't make sense anymore all right which is why these these are aligned in i mean you just plot them with respect to n okay now the question is given these two sequences that is this chap and this guy here how will i end up what will i do to these two sequences how will i process these two sequences in a manner so as to get back what i would have if i had a sample and hold working at at twice the rate what i should do would be to take x e of n okay what should i do i mean the technical way of doing this is to say up sample by a factor of 2 everybody is uh, familiar with up sampling right so basically what i have will be a sequence here which is one, i mean whatever it was earlier i insert a zero what i had earlier insert a zero what i had earlier insert a zero and so on correct this is what i will do i will take the odd sequence also insert zero at every alternate sample zero 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 okay then what should i do i shift the odd one by how much one sample there is no t anymore once you have a sequence it's all samples okay so what should i do z inverse and then do what add the two so let me get rid of all these sequences and draw a clean diagram so x of t sampler at 2k t i will take the sequence up sample by a factor of 2 
I will take x of t, have a sampler at 2k plus 1 times t. Delayed by z inverse add the two up and this should be equivalent to what do I get here? It's equivalent to sampling at at k times t, not t by two. Each one of these guys is operating, each of these individual sampling uh, sampling holds is operating at two t. Does that make sense? Okay. So, if for example, I, this was a black box, I would not be able to distinguish this black box from a sampler operating at t hertz. Does that make sense? You, when I put an arrow up and put 2, it basically means that I insert 1 0 between the equivalent rate sampling, I mean the rate at which the sequence comes out is now twice and there is I insert one extra zero between two adjacent samples. So, this the question is what is upsampling? The as we all agreed what we had to do was we had to I mean we want to put this uh, this guy between these two correct and I mean between these two it is no man's land in discrete time correct. So, you have to actually insert an extra sample which is equivalent to putting a 0 ok uh, and uh, I mean the, the rate at which samples are coming out have to be doubled you need extra samples those samples are 0 then where those uh, samples are 0 you need to insert the odd sequence this process of you know adding zeros in between uh, consecutive discrete time samples is often called upsampling ok and uh, the, the notation for this is is this guy here. Uh, what do we expect as far as the spectrum from here to here is concerned? This whole thing is equivalent to sampling at a rate of 1 over t. So, we would be able to directly write the spectrum here, discrete time spectrum when given the spectrum of x of t. Okay? And we should also be able to trace through this uh, signal path and we should get the same expression even after we go through this block diagram here. Okay? So, let us see if that is indeed true. What is the spectrum of the signal at this point? Is it a discrete time signal or is it a continuous time signal? Discrete, discrete time. So, what is the spectrum? You just look at the formula. One by two t sigma x of omega by two t minus two pi k by two t pi k by t, which is equivalent to two pi k by two t. I just want, didn't want to cancel because it can become confusing. Okay, all that we have done is replace t with two t in the formula. Bottom line. Okay, great. Now, what is the spectrum at B? Ah. See, we know the formula for the following. If I have sampler, sam any signal sampled at uh, 2kT, we know the formula. We need the spectrum of the signal when it is sampled at 2k plus 1 times t. So, which is equivalent to advancing x of t, shifting x of t by minus t and sampling at 2k t. Uh, is this signal continuous time or discrete time? Continuous. continuous time. So, what is the Fourier transform of the signal there? x of x of j omega times 
e to the plus j omega t. Great. And this has to be sampled at 2 k t and you know the formula now. Right? So, what should, what should the, uh, the, the spectrum at B be? Therefore, it's 1 over 2 t sigma k All right, x of omega by 2 t minus 2 pi k by 2 t. Is that all or is there something else? Times e to the j omega by 2 t minus 2 pi k by 2 t times t. Is that clear? See, this is the spectrum of the continuous time signal before sampling. Alright? To get the sampled spectrum, all, all we do is replace capital omega by a capital omega by a capital omega times 2 t by small omega or replace capital omega by small omega divided by 2t. Is that clear? Okay, this is just copy paste. I mean, there is no major funda here. Right? Once you know the previous thing, it is straightforward. So, to summarize, the spectrum at B is 1 over 2t sigma k x of omega by 2 t minus 2 pi k by 2 t e to the j omega by 2 t minus 2 pi k by 2 t times t. What is the spectrum at A1 So you have basically you have a discrete time sequence Is the signal at A1 a discrete time sequence or a continuous time sequence It is uh, it is discrete time okay <laughs> So, what can you can you comment on the spectrum at A1? I mean, it is a discrete time sequence, so the spectrum is periodic. Sure. What else? Replace? Replace omega by 2 omega. Okay. If you had, for example, x0, uh, x1, x2 was the sequence. If you insert zeros, I get x0, 0, 0, x1, 0, x2. If this had a Fourier transform x of e to the j omega, this will have a Fourier transform x of e to the j2 omega. That is all. Correct? You understand? So, it is simply replacing omega by 2 omega. Okay. So, now that that is clear, is 1 over 2 t sigma k x of 2 omega by 2 t minus 2 pi k by 2 t. Does that make sense? All right. Similarly, the spectrum at B1 is what? Again, I replace omega with 2 omega in the spectrum I had it B
So, some of you may be wondering, wondering what is all this messy math, okay, it is messy, we just let's give me some time, we will go through the math and then we will uh, we'll look at why this uh, physically makes sense, okay. Uh, all right. Now, we know the spectrum at A1, we know the spectrum at B1. The next thing is to find the we need to find the spectrum at B2, all right. So, spectrum at B2 is simply <coughs> copy paste and multiply this by e to the minus j omega. It is simply one sample delay. All right. So, now I can take the e to the minus j omega inside. And I will cancel off the T. And these two go away. These two go away. So, what am I left with? <coughs> the spectrum at B2 is nothing but 1 over 2T sigma k x of omega by T minus 2 pi k by 2 t all right e to the minus j k pi does it make sense ok now so this is the spectrum at b2 spectrum again at uh, A1 was 1 over 2t sigma k x of omega by t minus 2 pi k by 2t. Mind you. J the moment of truth is nearing. So, when you, when you add these two expressions, Magically, you must get what were you expecting to for the spectrum here? 1 over t summation x of omega by t minus 2 pi k by t. Okay. So, let us see if that happens. So, the output spectrum. So, when I add the signal at A1 with the signal at B2, I should get 1 over 2t sigma k x of omega by t minus 2 pi k by 2t times 1 plus e to the minus j k pi. All right. So, for k equal to 0, this must be 1 over 2t times x of omega by t times how much? Into 2, which is 1 over t x of omega by t. Alright? For k equal to 1, it is 1 over 2t x of omega by t minus 2 pi by 2t times 1 plus minus 1 which is 0. You understand? Okay. For k equal to 2, it is 1 over t x of omega by t minus 
टू पाई बाई टी टाइम्स वन प्लस वन विच इज वन ओवर टी एक्स ऑफ ओमेगा बाई टी माइनस टू पाई बाई टी सो फॉर ऑल ऑड के दिस टर्म वैनिशेस and for all even t it becomes 2 so clearly this this thing here this is equivalent to saying it's 1 over t sigma say m x of omega by t minus 2 pi m by t the whole thing seems to make sense okay all right and this is what you are expecting anyway all right however you however you implement the stuff inside if input or output you have an equivalent sampler with uh, with at a rate 1 over t this is what you should expect for the spectrum So now let's take a look at what is happening really inside. I mean, see, you have two samplers sampling at one half the rate. So, so for example, if the input signal had a bandwidth in hertz all the way up to one over two t, so this is x of. Uh, now if i sample this at uh, at a rate 1 over 2t what do you think will happen the only way i can sample it without uh, losing information is to sample it at a rate of 1 over t hertz okay does it make sense but please note that when i do this interleaved sampling each sample and hold is actually sampling at a rate One over two t, so which is not good enough, which is not high enough. So each sample and hold incurs aliasing error. For example, when I sample this at a rate of one over two t, what I get is something like this, and so on. so in the discrete time spectrum what will this look like the axis will simply scale so what will this become sampling at a rate of 1 over 2t so 1 over 2t must become 2 pi the sampling rate corresponds to 2 pi okay so this in the discrete time sequence will become 2 pi this will become 4 pi this is minus 2 pi minus 4 pi and so on okay once i interpolate what do you think will happen so this is what happens this is the discrete time spectrum after sampling okay then what am i doing we are inserting so what we just plotted is a spectrum at a what are we doing next we are inserting zeros so and we saw that inserting zeros what it does to the spectrum is simply scale the spectrum by a factor of 2 so what happens now what was 2 pi should become pi what was 4 pi should become 2 pi right so this is the, uh, the diagram of the spectrum at a1 all right similarly this the value of the spectrum at b2 is very similar except for a small difference
what is the difference this for odd k the it's multiplied by minus 1 okay so the odd images are multiplied by minus 1 so what we have is something like this you understand because please note that if you look at the spectrum of uh, B2 for odd k this factor becomes when k is even this factor is 1 when k is odd this factor is minus 1 so when I plot the spectrum this corresponds to the odd k because I have shifted the spectrum by one sampling rate ok this I have shifted by two sampling rates so it is multiplied by minus 1 again and so on so when I add these two spectra when I add the signal at A1 with the signal at B2 what happens this this guy cancels off this chap ok this chap this guy cancels off this chap and you are left only with this fellow and you know when you add these two up this will get multiplied by 2 does it make sense so what is happening is that there is definitely aliasing happening if I just took one channel output I will get complete garbage because I need to add this chap with this chap ok so each channel both channels have aliasing however the aliased error in each channel is equal and opposite so when I add the two things together the alias cancels off you understand So, the bottom line is that aliasing error gets cancelled. And you are left with a nice neat Nyko spectrum, which is what you are expecting because if the input signal was exactly Nyquist straight as far as the sampling rate of t is concerned then when you plot the discrete time spectrum it will occupy all the way I mean the spectrum will occupy all the way from 0 to pi on either side does that make sense ok fine so this is an interesting mathematical exercise in reality when you have two different sample and holes clearly they are not going to be exactly identical so what do you expect will happen so this cancellation will not be perfect ok which means that you will get you will get aliasing error which depends on on the mismatch between the two sample and rows so if you have a sampler there are you know several possible errors one of course is that there is gain error ok you want the output to be you are expecting x of 2 kt but what you will get is say 1 plus delta times x of 2 kt does it make sense this delta is some random error which is not known Another thing is offset. <coughs> offset error is something that you would expect from all analog blocks. Okay, presumably there are some transistors inside, blah blah blah. So the bottom line is that instead of expecting 
x of 2 k t, I get x of 2 k t plus some y naught. All right. So y naught is some some constant number added to the sequence. That's all. And the third thing is is timing skew or timing error. So you wanted x of if I put x of t, you would have, you were expecting x of 2k t. In reality, you get x of 2k t plus phi naught. Where phi naught is again random and not known a priori. Intuitively, what do you think will, when there is gain error between the two sample and holds? Ideally, if the two are exactly equal, then this alias must exactly cancel with this alias. Now, if this is slightly off because the gain of the sample and hold is slightly greater than 1, then when I subtract the two, since the two of them are not identical, I will get a term which is proportional to delta, the difference in gain error because cancellation is not happening perfect. What do you think will happen when there is offset error, when each of them is offset? There is an offset, each sample and hold has got its own random offset. So, this y naught here is different for each sample and hold. So, what do you think will happen? I mean, let us put in DC into the sample and hold. Okay. If you had an ideal sample and hold, if I put DC, I must get this sequence. Now, each sample and hold has got its own offset. So, it gives you DC, DC plus some offset. The other sample and hold also gives you this signal DC plus its own offset, which is some, which is different from the offset of the first sample and hold. You put DC into a sample and hold, you are expecting a constant sequence coming out. But what you actually see is a sequence like this. Correct? Uh, look at it and tell me what components are there in this signal. Intuitively look at this, this can be thought of as a DC signal plus a sinusoid at pi, you understand, does that make sense? This is periodic with, I think it is time, so let me wind up, I will continue next week.